This is the Cape Nebula, a stunning location and a new star system for what is easily the best space shooter out there, Everspace 2. The latest update for the game then, released this week, this is the third major content addition to the early access title and opens up an entirely new area whilst bringing new bad guys and a brand new ship. The ship is the Vindicator, a heavy fighter, which you can see me flying on the screen right here. Now I've just entered the new star system and the map only shows the area I've so far explored. There's supposedly a friendly shipyard nearby, but I'm having a little trouble locating it. The hostile faction here, known as the Redeemers, are making a nuisance of themselves for sure. Combat in Everspace 2 is fast, frantic and honestly, for me at least, perhaps because I'm a bit on the rusty side, it's as tough as nails. A winning combination then to make things fun. As you can probably see, it took me a while to get back into the swing of things with the combat. Later in the video, I'm doing much better than at this particular point. The Vindicator then, whilst being a little on the sluggish side, has some great design features. Most notably, it can convert any enemy shipwrecks into combat and repair drones, which you can use uh, yourself. These are friendly drones. You can have five of these accompany you at any one time. They self-repair and are extremely useful, to say the least. Some of Earth Space's combat features also come in very useful. For example, the ability to regenerate a certain amount of armor after defeating a hostile. Now, I want to show a general flow of the gameplay here. The idea is very much built upon a unique blend of exploration and combat. Combat, because hostiles turn up at an alarming rate, to say at the very least there's always some hostiles about. Exploration, because you have to track down new areas and then investigate and explore them. Traveling, between, uh, traveling around these areas is very smooth. Inside each zone, you can travel at regular speed, use the afterburner, or accelerate up to some seriously high speeds. Travelling between areas is done at superluminal speeds. This effectively allows you to explore the star system at high speed and travel where you want. Here, you can travel to new locations or drop into undiscovered signals. Right, so let's take a look back at the galaxy map. Here you can see all the different star systems. Down the bottom left we've got Seto. Above that is Union, off to the right is Zarkov. These are the star systems unlocked with the previous editions of the game, Seto come with launch. The Kuwait Nebula, where you can see the little green, uh, green flag, that's my current location, is the new edition. Now if we have a look at Zarkov here, you can see how distinct it looks on the galaxy map compared to the Kuwait Nebula. All star systems in Everspace 2 are handcrafted, and the idea here is that everything can be unique and bring something special uh, to the game, so at any given moment you're about to tell exactly where you are, pretty much based on the aesthetic of the current star system. Zarkov obviously has a lot of rings there. I actually really like this uh, galaxy map. Wonderful, wonderful looking planets here. Very nicely rendered. Anyway, we're in the Kait Nebula. Just jumped in, moved over to the Orkut Trading Station. Orkut Trading Station, had to try and take out some bad guys here and I'm now trying to find my way into the station itself. It seems pretty well hidden. The furthest humankind settlement in the Belt of Grades, the Ark 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 Trading Station, is the final frontier before crossing into the Okar territories. The settlement has no ties to the uh, scientific expeditions, instead dating back to the sector's colonization before the Okar colo colonial conflicts themselves. Its environmental remoteness and lack of colonial allegiance has saved it from destruction and there you can see it is a trading station it should have a uh, shop there the other areas in this region are all the question marks at the moment that's because i haven't uncovered them so it's going to take a little bit of exploration to go and see those so that really is the main flow of the gameplay here in everspace 2 as i said early on exploration and combat a really nice mix actually they've got it balanced very well so here's those uh, wrecks. We're going to pick those up and convert them into some drones. Uh, we've got what three at the moment, I think. We can see up the uh, top left. And we've just got a fourth one, by the looks of it. Of these uh, wildlife, I guess we can call it, around space jellyfish. One thing you'll find, uh, very, well, it's, which I find very compelling about Everspace 2, is that as you explore space, you find a lot of flora and a fauna dropped around or scattered around. And incidentally, um, to keep talking about space, it's also worth mentioning that the game does also have some planetary surfaces. Unfortunately, I haven't looked at any in the, the Kite Nebula because 
I haven't explored the entire area yet. But there are some clips out there, there are some footage around of various planets. You can see a few sections here from some of the previous times I've uh, made videos on the game. So it looks like the entrance to the um, to the trading station should be around here somewhere. This looks like a platform of some type. The trick is to find the way in, and you can see my ship is pretty beat up here. So ideally, we need to get in there and do some repairs. On the top left of the screen, you can see my HUD elements. It's uh, blue is the shield, yellow is the armor, and red is the hull points or the hull hit points, which we do need to get repaired. It looks like maybe over there is the entrance. There we go, Aquat Trading Station. So, as you can see, the game does have various camera modes. We've got two third-person perspectives and a view from inside the cockpit as well. You can fully play from in here. And there's also a fourth view where you basically remove the whole HUD and the whole cockpit and you just fly around with the camera's perspective. So, it really depends on how you want to do that doesn't seem an easy way and at least not an obvious entrance I think we just need to fly through the uh, gaps here don't know what that was I thought I'd crash into something for a moment there don't want to hit anything too much because it will take the shields away and I don't want to lose any uh, hull damage right there's a the landing platform so the way it works here you, you can approach the oh, you need to approach the landing pad manually and once you're close enough to it just press the F key and it will auto dock. Nice to see another soul out here, not gone black eyed mad. But you can see down the bottom it says text to speech. That is placeholder text. The reason for that is because uh, this is still in early access, and you'll find there will be another update, probably not too far off, where the lines will be recorded. I don't think all the lines are text to speech actually. The earlier sections of the game are uh, all voice recorded. Well, you know, to be honest, uh, early access games do get a bit of a bad rep, and sometimes justly so, fairly so. Brookfish are not one of those. These are really, really good developers, and they do get their games out. They may stay in early access for a year or so, and then they go into full release. And all along the way, they get some regular high-quality updates. Now, I'm not going to go into all the details too much here. This has been updated since I last looked at it. Uh, basically, we, as you can see, it speaks for itself. We've got inventory, ship, perks, map, missions, and data. That's something perhaps to go in further depth in another video. But let's get out of here and do a little bit of exploration. Now, we can go to any one of these in uh, any order we like. But the Athorian fort sounds pretty interesting to me. A layered asteroid field classified as an inconvenience to explorers. Uh, Let's see what that leads to. So you can see the orange, the orange icon on the HUD. You know, that's this is one. If I was going to fall to ever space, it would definitely be for this. It's all the icons dotted around. You can switch some of these off, but doing so doesn't really help or assist you in any way. I think there's uh, the HUD is a little bit too cluttered and a little bit too messy, especially when there's a lot of action going on. It can make it very difficult to navigate. Personally. I prefer a radar at the bottom of the screen for at least uh, certain elements, maybe for hostiles and contacts. When everything's floating around the screen like that, it gets very cluttered and very messy. Nonetheless, beautiful looking game. So there's an unknown signal down there. I'm not going to drop into that one. Maybe we'll do it in the next one. Let's drop into the Athorian Fort. We're nearly there. And you can see the cockpit there. Uh, misting up a little bit, freezing perhaps. The cold temperatures of space. Right, so here we are, the Athorian Fort. Actually rather interesting looking location. And this uh, basically all comes about thanks to the game being uh, handcrafted. It does give some very interesting and very neat looking locations. Looks like we're being attacked again and straight away, as I said early on. Loads and loads of hostiles in this game. You really don't get too much in the way of a break. Let's see if we can take these out. So as I said, a bit rusty with the combat. It takes me, took me quite a while to really get back into it again. It's very much um, a twitch shooter, I'd say. It does work with uh, with the control pad, but I much prefer to use uh, play twitch shooters with a mouse and keyboard. Even though, as you can see, 
Uh, I'm not the best at it at this particular uh, moment. If, even with a bit of practice, to be perfectly blunt, I don't get too great with it. But, you know, I'll make it through. I don't get killed. Or at least, hopefully I won't get killed. You can see my shield is fully up at the moment. My uh, armour is fine. I think those drones are really helping out, aren't they? They're doing quite a bit of good for us. So I also have some other modules on the ship. Down the bottom, I've got on the bottom left, you can see, or the right in the bottom, the middle left, let's say it that way, there's three devices. Number one was an EMP blast, which I used a moment ago. It takes a bit of time to recharge, and then we can use it again. Number two is a rapid acceleration boost. You can use that in combat. And number three is effectively a slingshot. It uses an energy tether to grab onto whatever's nearby and slings you around it. So... Once you're in these areas and you've cleaned up some of the hostiles, at least in the nearby vicinity, you're free to explore a bit. And for me, this is where Everspace 2 really shines. You never really know what you're going to find. This looks uh, not particularly pleasant, does it? Some sort of organics in here. If you don't know what it is, just shoot it. That's my philosophy. Oh, we've got an acid pouch here. So you can pick these type of things up, usually. Uh, sometimes you'll see these with energy packs and you can then launch them so no idea if i'm meant to use this somewhere else in the uh in the area whether i can launch it at a hostile perhaps as a form of weapon but you know it's not sounding too pleasant in here i think i'm going to cause myself more harm than good i keep clipping the sides and uh, those toxic clouds of acid are probably not something i should get near I'm thinking about taking this, but it seems resistant to it. It sort of doesn't want to be released from whatever it's attached to back there. You know what? I think I'm going to get out of here. My drones are trying to help out a bit, but my armor is a drop in. Let's see if we can find a way back out. But, you know, it gives a good feel for things, doesn't it? A massive big asteroid here, and you can certainly fly around it and see what's gone in. Uh, going on in there. I was hoping that would drop something. Shame to actually destroy these. It's actually really wonderful looking uh, plants. Got a thermo gun there. This is a rare quality one. Let's put it in the inventory. And we'll pick it up and use it later. I think that will do for now. I actually want to get out of here. Where's the exit? There we go. Bit of a squish though. And we're out. In addition to having the new ship then, the new enemy hostiles and the new star system, the Kite Nebula update also comes with some additional story. Unfortunately at the moment it's still in text-to-speech form, a lot of it, but that will be updated over time, just as uh, the previous editions have been updated as well. And there we go, another unknown signal source. I said the next one we would go visit, so... Let's divert from the course and drop in there and see what that's all about. We find all sorts of things here. This time we found a asteroid cluster. Looks like some sort of abandoned space station there as well. And of course, a load of Redeem uh, Redeemer hostiles as well. These are drones, relatively easy to take out, but they can do a heck of a lot of damage. Thankfully, I do have these drones here because with the amount of shots I miss, they're certainly needed, aren't they? I really wish I could use the EMP blast a little bit more often. It does stun the drones, it stuns most of the ships and freezes them in place for a little while, making them a bit easier uh, to use. Actually, it's recharged now. I should... Should be using it, shouldn't I? Let's save it though and see what happens. Uh, this is, goes back to what I was saying earlier again. This is it's, For me, I find this really difficult with the clutter around the HUD. All the red triangles point towards um, hostiles. So when there's a lot of them moving around the screen, it makes it a bit difficult for me to actually figure out what is where. Very bright sun there. Okay, so there's the abandoned station. 
These are all the stuff that the enemy drops. We can pick up a few of these various resources. Some of them will repair uh, different aspects of your ship as well. Let's head over to that station. Okay, so uh, a few containers over here, a few shipwrecks, I think. So it looks like once you've got five drones, you just essentially dismantle the shipwrecks and take some of the resources from it. This time, what was that in the form of credits, was it? I didn't quite catch that. Some more drones over there. I don't fancy any more combat. Doesn't seem to be too much else around here. Ah, the Immaculate Redemption. I believe that was right over the other side of this star system. So let's head there. I think this is where we were heading anyway a moment ago, isn't it? 25 light seconds left. Not far away. I think this is going to be a pretty important part of the uh, the update. Maybe uh, central to it. The Immaculate Redemption. But something to do with Redeemers, perhaps? I don't think I want to reveal too much about what's going on there. Let's see what, what this is about. The Immaculate Redemption. Yeah, so this is definitely one of the storylines. So I'm going to cut it off right here. I think that gives you a good feel of what the Kite expansion is all about. Uh, yeah, as always with Everspace 2, very enjoyable. As always, thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys and girls next time.